Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to attempt to upgrade this. This is my daily flyer Quadmilla Siren F3 split. Right now it's got the O3 air unit. Well, technically the lightened O3 air unit. And I'm going to attempt to upgrade this over to the O4 Pro. Let's start by doing a quick unboxing of the new O4 Pro. The packaging is quite a bit different from the O3 air unit. When you open the O4 Pro packaging, this is what you see. We've got an accordion style manual. Next we have the air unit, the camera, and also the antenna. Finally, we have the connection cable and the connection cable is the same as the prior generation. So really you can just unplug the cable from the O3, plug it into the O4. We're almost done with the installation and right off the bat, I did notice that working with the O4 Pro was way easier than working with the O3 at launch. Perhaps it's a testament to the Quadmilla frame here that's a little bit of a future proofed as well. Or maybe, just maybe, DJI is actually listening to us and doing some things to make our lives easier. So let's start from the back and work our way forward. I did make a decision to use the O3 antenna over here. Yes, it's not ideal, but I never had any signal issues with the O3, so I'm hoping the same experience with the O4 Pro. If I do have issues, I'll think about perhaps an aftermarket antenna, or dare I say, maybe use the antenna they came with. That will add weight, but if we have to, we have to. And you can see I did coil up just like before the excess antenna over there. Now to mount the actual O4 Pro, very easy. I just used the 20 by 20 mounting that was already in the Quadmilla Siren F3 split frame using our M2 screws. Very, very easy there, that slotted right in. And then I did use the DJI quick connector. I had to find a shorter one that I had in my, my bin somewhere because I'm going from here over to here. Yeah, you can use the one they came with, but that's probably like that long. So this will give us a way easier kind of installation. The camera cable between the O4 Pro and, and the camera is actually longer than the O3 and it's way more stiff. So I did coil it up over here, but a lot more difficulty doing so than on the O3. It worked just fine, but do bear that in mind. And you can see, well, I guess you can't see, but I did route the cable right underneath the flight controller over there. Now the most difficulty as expected is the camera, but my 3D print mount here that I designed even before the O4 released actually seems to be working okay. I've got it set to a fixed 25 degree up tilt. And I played with, diff with 15 different versions of this to try to minimize just how, or I guess maximize how close the camera is to the bottom deck. So you probably can't see, actually maybe you'll see if I move this around a little bit. We've got maybe half a millimeter down there. And otherwise the camera is fitting in quite good. We are a little bit full, more forward than I would prefer, but we have to do that to allow us to clear the top deck. Now the top deck, this is where you will have to take the Dremel and do a little bit of modification because this opening is not large enough to clear the camera, even though we have the camera so far forward. So I just added a little bevel with the Dremel. Not much, you can kind of see, I, I didn't really remove any material because I'm still going right up until my mount here. But I did bevel this whole section, more bevel in the middle than on the edge. Just make sure if you're working on carbon like this, you do wear a mask. Carbon is nasty stuff and we don't want anyone to get sick. Wear a good mask before you do this, wear eye protection. The O3 antenna is 3.14 grams and the O4 antennas weigh 4.15 grams for the two of them. I'm surprised, I thought they would be heavier. And here's a final product. That sensor module is humongous, but it does fit in with just those couple of little modifications. Here we have the quad with the O3 and the decased O3 air unit. This thing weighs, without battery, 148 grams. And then this monstrosity with the O4 Pro weighs, again, without battery, weighs 155 grams. Actually, not bad. We've only added in seven grams. And we're talking about a before weight that was a decased air unit. This is pretty good. Right now you're looking at the onboard recording from the DJI O3 air unit on my identically built quad. And I want to start off by doing a test flight with the O3 air unit so that we can actually get a sense of how the image quality would be on the same day under very, very similar kind of lighting conditions. And what can I say? The O3 performs as we've grown accustomed to over the last two years and, and two months. 
The biggest issue with the O3 always was that dynamic range and the ability of giving you enough detail in the shadow so you don't crash into trees and branches. But otherwise, the image looks great. Even when we look at the image from the Goggles 3 uh, Goggle View recording, everything looks fine. We're holding a nice solid 50 megabits. Everything is working as expected and as we've grown accustomed to over the years. Now you're looking at the onboard recording from the O4 Air Unit Pro. This is also shot in the same settings as what we saw with the O3 Air Unit. And off the bat, I can definitely see way better image quality. Now, perhaps it's not way better, but it definitely does feel way better. I can see a lot more detail in the tree limbs. I can see a lot more detail in the snow, which I guess is, is expected. You now we've got that massive, uh, image sensor, so we should be seeing something for, for its size. I also did find as I was flying around that I flew around quite a bit slower just to take in some of that eye candy. And I can see in the shadows there are more details than on the O3. And interestingly enough, this time around with the O4, everything seemed to work just fine at launch. There wasn't any kind of weird behavior, disconnects, any of those kind of things that we experienced with the O3 and we experienced with the original OG uh, air unit, that big rectangular thing. I also did a bunch of zigzag maneuvers just to see whether I can induce any kind of weird shakes in the camera image and everything seems to work okay. Now looking at the goggle view recording, everything looks fine on the goggles three and definitely that more beautiful image sensor does show in what you see in the goggles and also the additional 10 megabits, which now pushes that up to 60 megabits does make a improvement there as well. Now I did see one weird behavior in my flights and I saw this on both the O4 Pro along with the O4 Lite. So when I started the flight, sometimes the goggles would not go to the maximum 60 megabits right away. They would stay at 40 megabits and then some point in the flight, whether it's like 30 seconds in, maybe one minute in, it actually ends up then bumping up to 60 megabits. So I don't know if maybe it's sensing some interference and that's why it's not going up to 40 right away, but just be mindful of that one small issue I found. So hopefully you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos.